Huntington here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me shortly. I see Mark is on. People give me a shout. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what's going on. And today we're going to do a few things. I'll do a quick run through on a couple of the items. I'm going to try and make sure I look at the, the primary camera over here. Thanks for the people that gave the thumbs up already. That is fantastic. It's good to have the support ahead of time before I've even done anything interesting. Always good. So here's a little run through what we're going to talk about today. Hopefully the audio is okay. Um, I have been experiencing, I don't know, I would say 80% of the time, I will try, <laughs> I will try so hard to make sure my audio is at a good spot. And I bet it's quiet. I bet that's louder now. It's much louder now. Doug Cunnington here. I just corrected my audio. For whatever reason, I see Lance is on too. I'm not sure what it is with my setup, but often when I start doing anything, my audio levels are reset down to, I would say like 30%, and it needs to, it needs to be like at 100%, all right? It needs to be all the way up, and it like resets on me, and I, I've, re I've reset it like 40 times today. So I think we're good to go. Thanks for the patience from uh, Formulaic. Uh, Garav, what's up? I got your email the other day. Lance, Chunky Moose, Fahim, and all right, yeah. It's a team effort here. It's always a team effort. And yeah, we got uh, Nathan on too. So here's what we're going to do today. Last week, it was pretty popular when I did the teardown of a niche site. So we're going to do it again. There's a kind of a big site. Probably the people watching this have heard of it. I'm going to give a little critique. I haven't gone over this one before. And it should be good. I'm going to go over a couple things. And by the way, you know, if you dig these, hit the thumbs up especially the, what do you call them, the teardowns. So if you like the teardowns, let me know so I know to do more of them live. And then if you're watching the replay, it's so important if you're watching the replay to leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, all those good things. If you happen to be watching this for the first time, that's super cool. Thanks for joining us. You can subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet in the past, but I have a hunch this is like a core group but most people are subscribed already. I'm going to talk briefly about Link Whisper just a touch. There's a promo going on this week, and there's a chance you've already purchased Link Whisper or you've heard about it from like a ton of other affiliates. So I'm not going to belabor it. It's kind of a mixed bag, you know, when you, you get emails on the same product like over and over again. It's like, all right, you're selling the product. We get it. But Link Whisper is a fine tool. It's definitely improved a ton, and I put out a video earlier this week on it. I'll uh, quickly mention a little bit with the Amazon commission rate change, and I do have a, a sort of a mini course out there on things you can do to help make up the gap. I'm also going to talk more about the free challenge, so starting on June 8th. It's coming up in a little while, but I just want to let people know ahead of time that you can sign up doing a free challenge to help you choose a niche, to help you find a niche that basically has a lot more monetization options than some of the other strategies that we've looked at before in the past. And I'll answer some questions, as always. A couple other uh, details. I'm going to plug a couple things here and there, generally things that are relevant. And I see uh, Tiff is on. We have David. We have AR and Gustavo as well. So I was... I was out traveling this week. I visited my parents out in uh, Georgia. So I, I flew for the first time in a while. In fact, I'm trying to remember the last time that I got on a plane. It must have been last year sometime. But it's crazy because I used to work as a consultant and I would fly like two times a week. I would fly out on Monday morning and then Thursday afternoon. And I was on a plane all the time. I was in the airport all the time. And it's funny. Let me know, people out there, have you have you traveled for business like that where it was basically full-time travel all the time? It's very interesting because when I was out there um, this week, I had to spend a little time packing. And I was like, oh, you know, do I need to bring this pen or this one? And what about extra 
batteries or whatever. Like, do I need batteries? Do I need to bring a charger? I had to get all my toiletries together. And then it's like I'm double checking. Like when I was leaving my parents' house, I'm like, oh, did I get all the chargers? Like, am I forgetting anything here? But when you travel every week, it's kind of like mechanical. You just get used to it. You know exactly where everything is and you, you rarely forget things. You're much more efficient. And I remember I used to fly out for a week and it would take me like, I don't know, 15 minutes to pack. Just throw a couple uh, things in the bag. You have some things sort of ready to go. You got your laptop bag, which is, you know, has everything you need, all the chargers and blah, blah, blah. And just very rarely did I forget anything. And it ended up being, you know, it's a little more mind capacity. It takes up more capacity in your brain to like travel if you don't do it that often. But going to the airport was kind of crazy. It was empty. There were like five or six people in the security line and the terminals were roughly empty. Of course, if a plane's about to take off, there's a few people sitting around, maybe more than you would think. I felt like the plane was maybe like half, 60% full, something like that. But there were, you know, quite a few people flying from Atlanta to Denver and, and back. But um, yeah, no weight in security. Traffic was very light overall. Most of the restaurants and shops were closed. Maybe like 10% were open. So just enough to like open things up, grab some food. But yeah, it was very sparse. Has anyone traveled out there recently? It's very crazy out there. And we have uh, Sioux Meat as well. And cool. Cool, cool. So a couple other things going on before I launch into the uh, to the teardown here. So I'm going to do my best to look back and forth from camera to camera. I do have the ability, I believe, to switch it back and forth. The lighting is a little different. It looks a little more, you know, like the it's like a half moon here. I'm, I'm lit well on this side, a little darker over here. But I think it'll be good for variety. And I just dig the camera over there. I'm going to be shooting more videos over there. It's a very good setup. I actually have a teleprompter for, you know, the times when I need to use a teleprompter. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, like, I, I do like the setup overall. It's taken me a while to sort of hone in on exactly what I want. So, and I see we have more and more people on here. So thanks a lot. And I'm just going to say hello to the other folks. So if you're just joining in, do say hello. If it's your first time on a live stream, let me know. Um, and I'll say, okay, so AR is asking a question. How did I get the idea of KGR? I was working with a lot of people in my mastermind group. And basically, I picked, picked some ideas from different places. And then I, I tried to think, hey, what's the issue with the way other people are trying to teach this? And generally, it's too complicated. People try to make it too exact. They try and make things like exact to be redundant. They try and make things a little too specific. And it turns out it's really hard. It's really hard to get people's attention with something complicated when you're trying to sh shoot statistics at them. So if you make it really easy, that's better. So I was like, I'm going to make this easy and put a name on it that will potentially get people at people's attention. But the big thing is essentially what uh, Vab Heave said, sorry, I'm mispronouncing your name, that it really works. So it turns out it's important that it really worked. <laughs> if it didn't work, no one would care, but it kind of works pretty good most of the time. So people tend to share it. So if you have an idea that works and it can make someone else look good, they will share it. They will talk about it. They may try and act like it's their idea, but I got out ahead of it pretty well <laughs> for the most part. So, okay. And cool. I'm going to I'm going to hop in and um, actually we're going to start start jumping into a couple things and before we do, I want to let you know that this live stream is brought to you in part by Ezoic. Ezoic is a Google certified partner. They help you display ads in an intelligent way, 
typically, not always, but typically they're probably going to be able to pay a little bit more because they sort of have a premium ad network. And there's a lot more involved in that. So I encourage you to check out the details. I want to point out that they do have the site speed accelerator, which works very well to increase your site speed. And I have been getting questions actually in the chat sometimes. And I was a little concerned at first. If you are using Ezoic and you're using sort of the the recommended way, especially for the site speed accelerator, they want you to use their DNS servers versus your registrar, where you have your domain registered. So the reason why you need to use theirs, you don't have to, you could use a WordPress plugin, but there's a couple great reasons why you should use their DNS. Number one, if you wanna get the maximum speed benefits, you need to use their DNS so that you get the caching and then you'll also get the CDN capability by using their DNS. They take care of it automatically for you. So you don't have to do extra configuration. You just have to use their DNS. The other part is with WordPress plugins, which I generally don't like, you can have conflicts. They're very common. A lot of, time, a lot of the time, if you have just like any random combination of WordPress plugins, there's gonna be some little conflict happening. It may not be apparent, it may be some deeply buried errors that are happening, but basically, yeah, you'll end up with some issues. So if you are using fewer WordPress plugins, that's good generally. And in this case, because of the way that Ezoic is, you know, doing things, whatever those things may be, conflicts could arise. So it's generally, it's better to use their DNS. And really, if you think about, if you're using a CDN, if you're using a caching plugin, basically you're gonna to have to turn over some of the loading of your website to the CDN. And essentially, I mean, Ezoic is a partner for Cloudflare, right? So they, they are using, to my knowledge, they're using Cloudflare. So it, th that's what you're running through. So there's no harm. And in fact, it helps your site load even faster. And if you're running ads, that's one of the biggest hangups is like, if you're running ads on your website, it's probably gonna make it run slower just by the nature of what's going on. Ezoic will also make it run slower, by the way. But if you're using their caching, if you're using their site speed accelerator, it will make it run faster. So thanks Ezoic for, you know, partially underwriting this show. Much appreciated. All right, a couple of people are saying, um, yeah, uh, Chunky Moose is saying, the office, uh, or sorry, the train station that he can see from his office has been pretty empty for a while. Nathan comment, comments that the lighting looks natural and it feels like a conversation. Good. I felt like um, at times I've had a little too much lighting, you know, a little, little too much. And I think I could step it down just a little bit and make it look more like I'm sitting in front of a window rather than me having 1600 watts of lights shooting at my face here. All right, Jeremy, what's going on? I see a lot of questions coming in here. So I'm going to come back to those and actually talk about, um, you know, some of the other things that we're going to talk about, including, including, and we're going to tear down a site, all right? We're going to tear down a site in just a second. All right, Mike Sims says you wrote 8,000 words yesterday and you're back at the keyboard today and you just got the notification, so you came to take a break. Thanks for joining. Mike Burke, Michael Burke said he started adding KGR to his Shopify blog. And I've heard, by the way, if you do KGR for more e-commerce type sites, dropshipping sites, uh, Shopify, et cetera, et cetera, it works pretty well because a lot of people are not doing like blogs. Um, on their e-commerce type sites, they're just running ads. And uh, Garav is here for the live stream. Perfect, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I talk much slower if you're not listening to me at 1.5. Cool, cool, cool. And I'll mention one more from Robin since people are telling me cool results and then I'll come back to the questions later. You may have to ask again later, sorry folks. I like to hold the questions till the end typically. Robin says, um, you followed the KGR, you have plenty blog, you have 20 blog posts and you're getting 6,000 users per month. Four are in position number one, eight are in position number two. 
one and number three in total of 14 in the top 10. That's awesome, Robin. Would love for you to send me an email, doug at nichesiteproject.com if you wanted to share more. It would be fantastic and quite inspiring. Okay, so I'm gonna switch cameras here and hopefully be able to do some things. So the site we're gonna look at is a public case study. So I try often, if I'm gonna share these sites that they're already public. It's not cool when I see people just uh, randomly picking sites out there and just adding them to like, hey, here's examples of niche sites and potentially getting, drawing a lot of copycats out there. And this site here, again, a lot of people probably have heard of it, but I have not torn it down or, or done anything with it before. It's called Own the Yard. It's a public case study by Spencer Hawes of Niche Pursuits. And I'm gonna share my screen in a second here. If I can figure out how to do that again. Yeah, we can do that. I even have a, a little quick quick sharing. It's making like a noise like it doesn't wanna do it. Cool, all right, it, it does it. And then you see me up there in the little corner. Uh, that's just fantastic. Okay, so this is Own the Yard, and I'm just gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about what I observe here and things I like, things that I don't like. So this site, and, and Spencer goes in depth on, on this site, and I should have a link in the description, um, but I might not. Sometimes I forget to click save and it may be sitting over there in another tab. But if you go to niche pursuits and you check out niche site project number four, Spencer has probably a dozen blog posts and a few other details about this website. He shares the income, he shares the expenses, also very important. So you can actually see the profit each month and it's grown quite a bit recently. Now I'm not going to go into all those details so that I can encourage you to go check out Spencer's stuff over there. If you stop by, let him know that Doug sent you. All right. So he's sharing all this stuff. And one of the cool things is he's using a link whisper to interlink all the content on the site. So I'm just going to scroll down and on the homepage, you'll see, you know, pretty big ad here on the top. I, I think that's probably you know, a choice that he made that he's gonna show ads at, at the top and we have like a bar down here um, at, at the very bottom. So kind of a ad heavy, I would say here. But the key thing to understand is he's publishing content that is both informational and directed or, or it directs people to purchase products basically. So the product reviews. So he has ads going and affiliate revenue going, which is a great combo. That way you could publish a lot of informational content, not have to worry about targeting a specific product. You're just looking for, you know, eyeballs. You're looking for eyeballs to look at your website. So as we scroll down, we see on the homepage, he has, well, there's a big hero image, but it's covered up by the ad. So not awesome there. Um, I would say, but I mean, you, you got to show ads, right? If, if this is your, your choice to show more ads, then that's cool. Like you got to put it in a prominent place. We have a little featured image for some of the recent posts as well as uh, sort of a, the title and a snippet. I would say this is very similar to the kind of view that you might see on a Carbonate site. So I've been talking about the Carbonate theme by uh, moneylab.co and there's a lot of uh, sort of similarity so kind of a hero image at the top a few of the posts here so this is good some buying guides there's a handful of them here i'm not going to read all of them there's some informational there are paintball guns which seems slightly out of place you know own the yard it's like about things that you should be doing in your backyard and in my backyard well, that's small. I live in a neighborhood. <laughs> so if anybody was shooting a paintball gun in my backyard or any of the yards next to us, you probably, you're not going to be able to do that for very long. The police are going to come and tell you to stop doing that. Pretty sure it's against the HOA. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the airsoft pistols. We're not doing any kind of shooting of anything in, in this neighborhood. So, um, especially the airsoft assault rifles. Definitely. Okay, the soccer balls, cool. Trampolines, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. And then we see a disclaimer at the bottom. Now, disclaimer at the bottom appears to be probably on the footer of every page here, so that's cool. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a couple posts to have a look at here. And I will check out, how about the best soccer rebounder? So we're just going to, again, arbitrarily take a look at this one. I'll click on it. And I have a very fast internet connection, but I could tell you it felt slow. So that, that is the downside to showing ads. And before I even go anywhere, just from a user experience standpoint, I'll be honest with you, I don't love ads. So as I'm looking at this page, there's one at the top, there's one at the bottom, there's one in the sidebar, and there's one right here underneath the title before I even get to the content. Now, for some industries, for some sites, that's gonna be common. You're gonna see this all over the place. I don't love those industries and I usually hate the websites. Once it loaded, it was relatively quick, but when I landed here, it was like taking a second or two and it wasn't great. I didn't run a speed test here, but it could be something that I take a look at in a minute. As we scroll down, there's a big image here. All right, kind of let you know you're in the right place. There's some internal linking right here. Now, one thing I don't like is we get to the content. We have the, the image here, that's fine. In the first paragraph, we have links to other posts. And in my opinion, you don't want to distract people immediately in the first paragraph. I like to put my internal links lower. I like to put the internal links to maybe the second two thirds, right? So the first third, maybe just focus on getting an affiliate uh, link out so people can, can click if they're in a hurry, they can go check out, you know, whatever the favorite product is. But here it's like, hey, you're here for soccer, but maybe you wanna get distracted and look at basketball. Maybe you wanna go look at golf. I don't know. I'm just throwing shit at the wall here. I'm not sure what I wanna look at. Um, so I, I like to keep people focused. I try not to distract them right away. We have another ad here for the Hoth, you know, great company out there. And as we're scrolling down, it's uh, well formatted generally. The paragraphs aren't too long. There's a table here, so that looks good. It looks like maybe this table is from AAWP if memory serves just how it looks here. I'm not 100% sure. We see we have three items, which is great. You don't wanna to give too many choices. Sometimes I see a table with 15 choices on there and I think that's too many, 10's too many. I mean, I think 10, um, 10 can still lead to some indecision. So three is perfect, five is fine. I would kind of keep it to that, that sort of level, three or five, something like that. It does give you um, some rating here and a buy now button, it gives you the price. Uh, each one of these is an affiliate link. So this image is an affiliate link. This title is an affiliate link. The stars are not, interesting. The price is and the button is. So each one of these products has four affiliate links per row. That could get you into trouble if you have too many. So that's another reason, you know, if you're gonna put, a, if you're gonna stack in the affiliate links here, like you gotta watch out. So if you put like three more items, if there were six total on here, you would have you know, 12 more affiliate links, 24 just in the table, which is kind of a lot. So one key thing you'll, you'll note here, cause some people may think, hey, you can't put the price in there. That's true, you can't put the price in unless it's pulled via the Amazon API, which the details are here. It was pulled uh, just a little bit ago. 45 minutes ago it was pulled. So that's good, that is okay because it's pull, pulled through the API. Now these stars here, that's up for debate. I've heard you're not supposed to show the star rating even if it's pulled from the API. Amazon somehow makes it available to be extracted, but I don't think 
you're allowed to show the star rating. So I've heard there are a few gray areas out there. So a couple more ads here. And, you know, this is, you know, one of those deals, like I'm, I'm not 100% sure if um, Spencer's using Ezoic on this, but with Ezoic, you can place placeholders, right? You could put placeholders where you want the ability to see if ads work well. So you're able to allow Ezoic to run its machine learning the auto intelligence is testing and placing ads in different sizes, different locations to see what results in the most revenue. And it may not be by displaying the most ads on the first page. It may be maybe you just show one or two ads to get people to continue looking on your site. So as we scroll down, we see um, you know a feature box here looks like generally the same sort of information that was in the table along with this set of details. I'm not sure if those are written custom or if these were pulled directly from Amazon or anything like that. Again, the price is listed. Prime is noted there, which I'm not 100% sure of the ability to use, you know, Prime, the Prime logo and everything like that. I'm not sure about that, to be honest with you. And I see more ads. Again, just testing, testing, testing. <laughs> As we scroll down, we got some pros and cons, which is great, and then a button to check the price and reviews on Amazon. Fantastic. So that's good, good overall. And I think my, you know, a lot of the comments stand. I don't need to repeat myself as I go through each one of the products. And you'll notice they have a mini review. It looks like, if I had to guess, about 150 to 300 words per mini product review, which is great. A lot of different choices and then here we see sort of the buying guide area now some people say they want to put the buying guide first and then have the products afterwards to help build trust other people want to have the products first to encourage people to click over to amazon and then perhaps continue reading so i haven't run extensive tests or anything but i have heard pros and cons for both so i, I would encourage people to test on their own me personally i kind of do like putting the buying guide first, but also giving people the option to click a couple times over to um, Amazon. Just say, hey, my, if you're in a hurry, my favorite product is X, Y, or Z, and here's why. And just make it quick. If you go look at the wire cutter, you'll see that they do that often. I'm gonna see a couple, couple questions popping through, so I'm just gonna hop back and answer a couple of those real quick. And Nathan had some good observations here, so I'll take a quick quick peruse. It'd be cool to see a mobile teardown, interesting. I think I'll need to check and see if I could share my screen on mobile, but I think I can actually like do the mobile simulation and make my screen, my window very narrow, so that's a good idea. Nathan also says the links in the intro are likely inserted by his plugin, could be a feature to deselect and, yep, exactly. So Link Whisper allows you to put in like very easily internal links and I think you're right. If, you, if you're if you not watching exactly what you're doing, then you could be inserting links like too early in the, in the copy, for my opinion. And I mean, it, it doesn't necess it doesn't mean people will be distracted because if they are if they're trying to get the information, they may not want to click off and it may not be a big deal at all. But you don't know. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It probably is from Link Whisper, which I'll talk about more in a second. Paul mentions that the stars are not compliant with the terms of service. Gaurav says, what do I think about AAWP versus Amazon custom ads? It seems you can't put the star ratings with plugins. I think Amazon custom ads and you get the ratings. I don't love the custom ads and I don't really like the AAWP tables. So if I had to pick, I'd pick neither and just not worry about the stars. I would tell people, go check the star rating. Click the link here to check out the star rating. I would use curiosity to take advantage of that. And 
And Chunky Moose says that the buying guide seems to be at the top more often than not in his research. So that totally makes sense. And Paul says the wire cutter changed their domain name. Man, I didn't even know. When did they change it? It's like I, I don't look there too often. So, you know, just throw it out. I used to say the sweet home for a long time too. All right. Yeah, I, I suspect they'll probably just rebrand everything and, and move everything over. It'll probably be generally okay. So, but who knows? I mean, their their name is very well known in general. So, and before we keep tearing down the site, I'm going to, we'll just mention uh, Link Whisper. So, Link Whisper, it does have a sale going on. I am an affiliate. I put a link in the description, so I appreciate it if you're, if you're interested in it and you want to to check out the features of Link Whisper. It is on sale. You get $25 off. It's not a particularly expensive plugin in general. And I mean, it just makes it easy to insert the plugins. So, or the plugins. It, the plugin makes it easy to insert the links internally. And it runs some reports that are more helpful, that are a little bit like next level. It helps you see if you're linking to dead links, which is helpful. And they're just adding more features all the time. It's really come a long way. When I first started using it, it was really buggy. And it's it's helped a ton um, just to get a VA to be able to interlink the content. I used to do this brute force by hand. I would take the, what do you call it, the XML and just copy all, all of the URLs over to a spreadsheet and keep track manually of where all the links went to and where they came from. And it took a long time. But the tool does both of those things. So you literally can pull a report. It does all this programmatically, querying the database. It's fairly straightforward. And basically, it makes it way easier. If you haven't interlinked your site and you're wondering know how to improve rankings or things are kind of stuck but if you haven't interlinked your site well yet you should definitely do it it absolutely makes a difference you typically will see an impact within you know days very very often paul mentions number one that the wire cutter moved over to a new york times domain is that right new york times Okay, yeah, so they moved over to the parent company, which is interesting. And then Paul also recommends Link Whisper. And Spencer does a great job with the updates, and Paul wasn't convinced at the beginning. Yeah, it was it was definitely a little rough at the beginning. I mean, the support was always there, but it was just, you know, some of the basic functionality I was having issues with, which some of the basic functionality that was most important to me was running a report and being able to uh, build links from old content to new. That works pretty much flawlessly now and it's much more, I guess, feature rich. You can do more with that one report and just alone that would be worth it to me, but it does a few other things too. Uh, Jack says, what's my opinion on Pop and Quora and Surfer SEO, et cetera, useful, effective? Yeah. So I haven't used Surfer SEO, but I know Pop and Cora are very effective. I know some of the people running it and the owners over there, they do a pretty awesome job. They're some of the best SEOs, technical SEO folks that I know. So I would encourage you to, to check them out. I am not, honestly, I'm not 100% sure of like the um, sort of free trial or money back guarantee or anything like that. But, you know, you can definitely check it out and see if you think it's worthwhile. It's probably, you know, one of those tools where you can test it, you know, pay for it for a month, even if you can't get a free trial. I think there's some kind of availability, by the way. Um, and I haven't used Surfer SEO, but I know a lot of people talk about it. And I, I don't know who runs that one or anything like that. So anyway. Um, and I'll just hit a couple questions while I'm here. Tiff says, I have a post 
where the keyword getting the highest impressions is not exactly relevant. So for example, the article is best ballpoint pen and the popular keyword is best lead pencil. Should I add another section to the article or make a new post? I would probably make a new post and then see if Google can figure it out. I would probably put an internal link from a couple of your pieces of content to the new post with pretty rich keyword anchor text so that Google knows that, hey, this new post is really about this topic. And chances are, especially if you put the title, make it really close, that's probably going to work out for you. Um, and Paul says, talked about it, but do I have um, new courses coming out? Yeah, I do. I'll come to that um, in a moment here. So I guess the thing I could point out is it's going to be, actually, let me pull the link for you, which I, luckily I don't have it handy. Naturally, give me one sec here. And feel free, feel free to ask some more questions over there. And I will be coming back to the, what do you call it? I'm going to come back to the teardown in a second. There's a couple other pages that we can quickly take a look at. But I want to show you a post here. Basically, I'm doing a challenge. I'm doing a challenge pretty soon with the Internet Marketing Gold community. And it's a five-day challenge coming up on June 8th. So there's a few days before we get to it. So you could, I'll probably be talking about it, talking about it more and more. I've been recording some of the material already. Oh, and people are, people are signing up already. So let me, let me hop back over to, I gotta get the keyboard shortcuts down. Okay, so five day challenge with Doug Cunnington. And basically, I'm going to be going over selecting a niche to make sure that you are in an area where you could very, very, um, where you could diversify your revenue streams, basically. So we're going to go through some of the details of that. You can sign up here. You can see some videos. It looks like I'm you know, sitting right here at my desk, <laughs> just like I am now. Yes, yeah, so you can check it out. You can sign up here. I believe there's a link in the description. And basically, you can get more details. At the end of the challenge, the reason why I'm mentioning this, Paul, is at the end of the challenge, I'm rolling out a new course, again, with a partnership with Internet Marketing Gold, IMG. It's Kyle Roof and Andy Stevens and Ted K, I don't know how to say his last name. They have, um, I think they have like the SEO Fight Club. I'm going to be on that show in a couple of weeks. And yeah, just a cool crew overall. A lot of people on on here are actually in that group. Very, very good community of either SEO professionals or sort of side hustlers and people that are interested in SEO. There's a lot of people that are interested in SEO. So uh, Naresh, sure, go ahead and ask your question. Robin says, does e Ezoic slow down the site? So technically, if you're showing ads via any kind of network, ads are going to slow down your site. Some people may not tell you that directly, but ads are going to slow down your site in some capacity. There's more calls happening. But what I've seen, especially go find a site that's running Mediavine. Actually, I need to do this a couple of times. Go find a site that's running Mediavine and run it through this, um, run it through the Google Page Speed Insight tool, and you'll see that the score is like, well, if you could ever get the page to load, it's gonna be a very low score. It sucks. So Ezoic will probably slow the site down a little bit, but if you use the site speed accelerator, most likely, and I've seen multiple people that I've suggested Ezoic to, to 
to do this, you know, run the ads, use the site speed accelerator, and generally their site will be running faster than it if they weren't showing the ads and they're earning money from the ads. So I encourage you to check it out and the site speed accelerator is free for seven days to check it out. Okay. Jack says, my low DA site is outranking a high DA site for a keyword. Why does that happen? What do I advise? Well, I mean, if you are outranking the bigger site, then I mean, I don't need to give you any advice. <laughs> But basically, I mean, the DA is just a metric that can be manipulated. So, I mean, DA is a metric from Moz, which is kind of the shittier metric out there these days. But, I mean, it, it does tell you a little bit about the backlink profile, but it can easily be manipulated. And generally, if you're just looking at the DA, you're only getting a, a view at the overall link profile of the site you're outranking a site with the specific page, two specific pages. So I would look at the backlink profile for those pages. If, you're, if you like the Moz metric, some people do, check out PA, check out the PA. Maybe that's a little more exact. Derek's on what's going on. And if you missed it, Derek was on the podcast on Monday and then the the uh, YouTube channel yesterday. It's actually blowing up. Who watched the video? And if, if you have or haven't watched the video, it'd be super awesome because it is getting quite a few views. I would suggest, please leave a comment on there. Just say like, hey, good video, give the thumbs up. I'm, I'm curious if, if actually like enough people comment and interact with the video, if it actually gets like recommended to more people and more people watch it, just curious. I I put out so many videos, it's hard to get like traction on any given one, at least the way I'm doing it. So Mike Sims says, you just got approved for Ezoic yesterday. You set everything up this morning and flipped on the switch. Yeah, I'm interested to see the results too. Please let me know how it turns out. Hopefully it'll work out for your niche. I have heard, you know, some people are like, man, it really it kills all the other, you know, ad networks for my niche. The user experience seems to be better and... Um, I'm earning more money. And then a couple other people have said, in my niche, it doesn't work that well. So I think it just depends on the sp specific um, kind of content that you have and your specific niche. Oh, and thanks, Paul, for reminding people to give the thumbs up. Yeah, hit the thumbs up if you have the opportunity. Positive Creator says, hey, I achieved my first small success. You're a month in and you're getting 30 hits a day. 80% of the articles are KGR and Google pushed an article to number one and you got the snippet as well. Congratulations. That's fantastic. That's what we want to hear. So I'm going to hop back over to the teardown, to the teardown. So again, just a reminder for people, if you have the opportunity, go to the video yesterday after you watch this and then leave a comment. Derek was on there. Derek's in the chat with us right here. And it was great for him to share his story. He has like 90 posts on his site, making $2,300 a month, and the site is under a year old. So pretty quick movement, in my opinion. So back to Own the Yard. Again, if you want to get more details on this at Spencer Haas site, you can go to Niche Pursuits and look for Niche Site Project number four. He outlines uh, everything that he's doing. He kept the site private for quite some time before he revealed what it was so he can make sure he got enough of a head start uh, so that no you know copycats sort of popped up out of nowhere you'll see he has the ads by amazon here um, i think um, i can't remember garum was asking about that and you know in this specific view the stars aren't shown but you do have you know very similar um you get the you get the title and it, maybe the stars are supposed to be there. There's like, you have the, this number, which I think is supposed to be the number of reviews, but we don't see the stars. Maybe we're supposed to. And there's FAQs here, something I recommend all the time. Like, hey, do some FAQs. Those are very helpful. People ask questions. You can get the questions directly from Google. 
it's very straightforward. A little wrap up here and some, oh, some clickbait. Some clickbait at the bottom. Let's see what kind of silly stories we got going on here. Oh, the confidence of switching and saving to progressive. Canceled shows. Oh, no, I hope Ozark is still on. Who watches Ozark? Love that show. It's a good show. More with Geico. We just switched from Geico, actually. We got Trump on here, a little screen flow. I just upgraded screen flow recently. And okay, so let's um, let's go back to the about page. So on the about page, we see ads as you would expect. And then you know, Spencer says, hey, I'm, I'm the creator of Own the Yard and here's what, here's what I'm doing. This is a great about page. It gives you a little explanation about why he started the site, why he's qualified and that sort of thing. And he also mentions that he's over at Niche Pursuits. So he's like, hey, I'm, you know, this is a side project. Here is also what I work on full time. So one other thing I'm going to take a look at, because with the Amazon affiliate program and just with any affiliate program, these days I'm ultra conservative and I like to put my affiliate disclosure before the first affiliate link. So wherever, wherever you can like get it, just put it before your first affiliate link. Um, you'll see Spencer doesn't do that. And I think the first affiliate links are here. And there is a note of like amazon.com close to it, but Technically, someone could click an affiliate link. This is very, very specific, but technically someone could, could, can click an affiliate link before they see the disclaimer. And, you know, this, the disclaimer is all the way in the footer, which, I mean, even if you're on desktop, you have to scroll all the way past all of the ads. So I would say very few people are seeing the disclaimer in the footer. Some people may be thinking, what if I put a disclaimer in the sidebar? Bad news. If you put it in the sidebar on mobile, it's pushed to the bottom anyway. So there's a good chance that people won't see it. Thus, you should, you probably should be putting your affiliate disclosure before any of the copy. Just a little line. Hey, I, I uh, work with Amazon. I get a commission if you buy something. I work with affiliate programs, including Amazon. I get a commission if you buy something. Simple, straight to the point. That's all you have to do. Okay, I'm going to go to Backyard Design and kind of see this is kind of like different kind of content. Potentially, it's not really affiliate content. Maybe it's more informational, maybe more images and stuff. How long does a wood fence last? We have a wood fence here, so let's take a look at that. So this is this is one of those where <laughs> this is one of those where it's like just tell me the answer. I don't want to read like 2000 words about how to choose a fence. It's like it should say if it's made of cedar, blah, if it's made of pressure treated pine, it lasts this long. If you're using reclaimed wood, you could expect this, that sort of thing. Here, could be standing after 100 years. I don't know if that's specific, specific enough. Okay, so we're getting there. You got cedar. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's one of those where it's like, you're just trying to look for a recipe on how to cook a hamburger, and then the person starts talking about what hamburgers mean to them and their family. And it's like, I just want to know, how do I grill it? You know, something simple. All right, so we have a fence here. Um, a lot of ads. You can see I was looking at cameras in the last week or so. I ended up getting one of these babies. Canon EOS RP. Pretty sweet. And I um, actually just recorded a, a video on, on uh, the camera and the lens that I got, which was not any of these, by the way, not any of these. Although this one looks sweet here. I almost was going to get it, but I was like, it's this nice small camera and I don't want to get this ginormous lens just yet. I have a couple 
other ginormous lenses that should suffice in the meantime. Anyhow, as we scroll down, you'll find informational content. You'll see some, uh, we have the subheadings. There's some ads which are relevant generally to backyard stuff, but not specific to like fences so much. Maybe this is the only thing that has fence in the title, but it's for like a garden garden post fence, not a wood fence like that. Um, oh, and how about that? I don't even know much about fences, but they talk about cedar, pressure, treated pine. I know more than I, I realized. We will have to stain it. Um, I actually should read about this. Uh, sprinklers, da, 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 da. harsh and dry. It's harsh and dry around here for sure. The sun's hot. You got UV rays baking it. The wind's rough. So dry around here. Okay, so I think they they kind of tell you that a fence could last for a while, but you gotta gotta keep it up to date. You gotta keep it clean. Oh, more clickbait. Let's see. I've been uh, checking out more clickbait lately. Man who predicted Trump's win makes another prediction. Oh man, I wonder what it is. Read this before you renew Amazon Prime again. Mm. Intriguing. Yeah, some people were like, hey, they cut the commission rate. I'm not going to go for Prime anymore. So curious. Anybody else thinking that too? The god-awful hygiene habits of the Wild West. I mean, that looks like a lady with a mustache. I'm not sure. And then these t-shirts were the greatest and worst moments. Hmm. I don't know what that says. I love... I don't know. I don't know. Should we click on it? Should we see see what it is? These are the grandkids of classic Hollywood stars. And these are by Outbrain, by the way. So we have this little panel of clickbait and then a couple other, you know, ads here. A couple other ads. And Paul says, I love clickbait and the people behind them make fortunes. Yeah, they just throw throw it at the wall and see what comes up. Okay, we'll just look at one. We'll check out the Wild West here. Ooh, spitting tobacco. The good part is you could just kind of flip through and you don't have to like check out too much. And then here we are. Spitting tobacco and more ads. I'm pretty sure Ozark's coming back though. Hold on, let's just see one more. Ooh, insects were in the Wild West Society. Um, Beds were made from straw and hay. And there were bugs like seam squirrels and lice. Oh, that does not sound good. Insects would contaminate food with their larvae, leaving a nasty surprise for unsuspecting people. Mosquitoes were an issue. And they were making their home in poorly insulated structures. Okay, just one more. This is how they get you. All right, one more and then that's it. Soap was a loose term and didn't offer much value. Today, people... Enjoy a shower in the morning or the first thing or last thing before bed. Sometimes both. I I like showers myself. No doubt slathering slathering yourself in soap. But the Wild West was different. Soap weed, which Mexican women used to wash their hair. The substance was made from the yucca plant and had a wonderfully soft, lustrous effect. Okay. People ask questions so I can get out of this uh, little wormhole here. Other settlers use soap made from animal fat to clean themselves. Unfortunately, the effects, the effects of the soap were less luxurious. Instead, it irritated the skin and body odor became a common issue. I thought Ozark was going to be renewed. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you, you got to keep going with it. Um, <laughs> let's see. This was an acceptable condition as overly clean pores had the reputation for exposing the skin to germs and diseases. Okay. Oh, wow, there's even more stories down here. Movie bloopers that are too good to be true. All right, we got to get out of here, guys. Got to get out of here. Okay. But I don't know. That could be a full live stream, just me going through different clickbait and seeing what's good. I don't know if it ever delivers. (laughs) I don't know if it ever delivers. It's crazy. 
All right. Yep, and Dami says that's how they get you just one more. And it sounds like Ozark is good for season four. If people haven't watched it, you should check it out. And uh, for for people, uh, Bill, you probably know this. So they shot that at Lake Lanier. As I was watching it, I was like, this totally reminds me of like the lake that I used to go to as a kid. And uh, yeah, so it was shot up in like uh, Swanee, whatever, Forsyth County um, in that area. So pretty funny. I think uh, Jason Bateman went to my cousin's restaurant. There's a picture of him with my my aunt and cousin over there. Um, <laughs> all right. Yep, and Chunky Moose says, I thought Own the Yard had a lot of ads. Indeed, it definitely seems like there were there were more than I would hope for, but I think it's important to note that if you if you know you're starting the site for making money and you see that you can develop the site and you're getting traffic, people are visiting the site and you have relatively good user interaction metrics and you're making money and the rankings are holding up, it's probably just fine to have that many ads. As I look at it, I'm thinking I hate going to websites like this, but it's just because I I appreciate the lack of ads many times. So quick note, quick note. Basically, I have a writer who's worked with me for a couple of years and she's been furloughed from her full-time job. So she works for me part-time a little bit here and there over the years. There's a link in the description. Her name's Haley McGuire. I think that's her last name. So I think I mispronounced it once, but Haley has a website. Check out her website. She actually has sort of like a package deal. I told her what we are looking for as publishers, as people that own content websites and need writers. And she has a couple packages. She doesn't publish it on her website because it's a little bit cheaper than what's published there. So head over if you want to work with the same writers that work with me. You can go over, check out some of the details on Haley's site. You'll need to shoot her an email to get the other rates. And it's a little more expensive than going straight to Upwork, but she's already trained. She, When I work with her, I just give her a title and then she does the rest. She finds the products for me. She does everything. She'll upload it and put it into WordPress. She does it all. She can probably do a couple other things too if you ask her, but basically shoot her an email. Next. Robin says, Google users have no idea about AMP either. The lightning strike icon, they probably never noticed it. Actually, I've never really, I barely noticed it myself. Um, And Nathan says, plot twist, no clickbait is good. And I could I could be reading it wrong. I don't know. Should there be a comma after no? And it's like, no, clickbait is good. I'm not sure. Maybe we do a whole <laughs> a whole click clickbait um, video here. Okay. Let me know if you have any other questions. We'll do a few here. I know a lot of people were asking questions before. And I got to a couple, but not all of them. Diwakar, Diwakar says, I have a site. It's two months ago. You posted 15 articles. You have optimized all the articles. But sir, instead of articles, my homepage is ranking on some keywords. Okay. Okay. So I would suggest, I don't know if you're putting your full articles on the homepage. If you are, don't do that. Um, maybe just have the titles of those articles. I'm not sure what you have on there. Ahmed says, we lost 70 to 80% of the total traffic. What steps do I suggest to recover the rankings and traffic? So I'm assuming it's related to the latest Google update in May. Typically, those are super hard to troubleshoot. Probably for the last two years, there's been no specific thing. Even if it was kind of specific, like, hey, you need to have some expertise, authority, and um, trust for your website. 
if you tried to add those EAT pieces, it doesn't mean you automatically recover it. So typically, it goes back to the same kind of boring stuff. Improve the content, add more content, get more backlinks. If you don't have any backlinks at all, like getting any backlinks will be very helpful. And I suggest you get about half of them to your homepage with branded anchor text. So you can build that sort of brand recognition. Google understands that. And then the other half to your inner pages. I don't expect if you do that, that it will recover right away, but you'll be moving in the right direction. So improve the content, get some backlinks. Paul says, Google announced on Twitter that they'll have a new update sometime next year taking into account on-page experience signals. Oh, you know what? I heard a little chatter, something to that effect um, not too long ago. It must have been like the last two days, I think. Um, probably the same thing. So very interesting. And I think, yeah, just having, I don't, I mean, I imagine it takes a lot into account already, but I wonder if they're sort of refining it and honing in even more. Jack says, "Do you, how do you train someone to find products for a roundup review like best X for Y? So I encourage you to check out nichesiteproject.com slash FAQ. There's a bunch of frequently asked questions. I think this is one of them. Typically, you just tell them what you want them to find. It's as easy as that. So I would suggest that you tell them to look for products with four to five stars, probably within a specific price range. I advise people that you have a range of prices so that everything's not super expensive or super cheap. And if you want to have some, you know, three star items to provide contrast, but basically, you can just tell them what criteria you like to use to find them. So if you know what you put for your products, then you just tell them what you do. So it is totally up to you. I'm not saying whatever I mentioned is right or the a good way to approach it. It's just the way I do it. And then you adjust from there. So you can give them instructions, see what they pick. And if you're like, oh, you know what? I didn't like that you picked that one. Here's why. Here's the one that you can pick instead. So once you have some data and some information, then you could adjust from there. Dwakar says you're not posting the full articles on the homepage, just the excerpt. So I'm not really sure. I suspect there's some other, you know, issues going on, but I'm not 100% sure what it would be. It sounds like there could be some problems on the individual pages. Um, potentially, if you're not interlinking the, the pages, that could be a problem. So I'm, I'm not really sure based on the information, but yeah, that, that's a problem if you're ranking the homepage um, and if anyone has ideas, but I think if you add relevant anchor text with internal links, Google can start to figure out that those pages are the ones that actually cover the topic. So I suspect the on page could be off for those. Graf says that you agree with Paul on the Search Console. You get a lot of insights from there. Oh, I must have missed that comment somewhere. Cool. Oh, oh, there it is. Check the Google Console. It's a gold mine of understanding what is happening. Yep, yep, yep. Cool, yeah. Uh, Dwakar, just, I mean, look on the on-page stuff. It sounds like maybe the on-page for those specific pages are off. Could be keyword stuffing. Maybe there's some kind of other issue with the H2 tags and subheadings and all that stuff. Not really sure. Not really sure. Oh, you, and going back to one of the questions earlier, you could use a tool like Pop to figure out your general... Um, keyword density and usage and understand what to use when. Robin says, interaction on, on YouTube is good. An assumption is that Google search results will show suggestions in future, in the future, like social media, not based on necessary, not necessarily on links or quality of content. Oh, interesting. 
I can see that. And I mean, definitely, I mean, that's one of the areas where I, I, I lack, I don't give people enough of a reason to leave comments on the videos and stuff like that. I'm honestly kind of shitty at responding back to a lot of the comments. I potentially could do a better job with that and get more interaction. Maybe I should look into it a little bit more, but as I, it, it bogs me down. It doesn't make me happy. When I start responding to a bunch of comments, I, I'm like, this is the worst thing in the world. I hate doing this. And I can choose what I'm working on. So I choose not to reply to very many of the comments. Occasionally I'll hop in there and actually it'd be interesting if I did. Um, it would be an interesting challenge if I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend fuck, whatever, one hour per day for 30 days and reply to like every comment. I'm going to like every comment and ask questions and try and get interaction maybe right because i'm planning on i'm planning on doing some more interesting stuff on youtube soon you may notice for the past i don't know six months i've only been publishing interviews long form interviews that i enjoy doing and then i publish clips from them I do some live streams occasionally i have some stuff pop up from the archive maybe a vlog here and there but you probably noticed that I'm like, I'm just, I'm not doing keyword research. I'm just publishing videos that this core group likes. You guys seem to like those. Um, the channel's growing ever so slowly. And um, soon, once I dig out of this hole, I'm going to be probably doing some keyword research. I'll probably be doing some videos that encourage commenting liking, doing some other things like that to get that interaction. Huge deal. I know it's a huge deal, but I've just been like doing my like just slow, whatever I want to work on kind of stuff. All right. Okay. Any other questions? I'm just going to pop through here. Ahmed says, what do I suggest to enter in the title and descriptor? In description to attract the users and increase clicks you should just google how to write headlines how to write headlines oh yeah robin says i'm sure it's a pain in the ass to reply to com comments yep and i mean you know some of them are great and i try to you know kind of pay pay attention here and there Oh, Gaurav says, any particular groups that I suggest? I'm a newbie and you're on the HPD group. Hey, Gaurav, shoot me an email to ask me. Um, there's a couple links I can send you. There's um, a Facebook group that I actually, my friend used to manage, Lewis Ogden, and then he gave it to me. And then I managed it for a short time and then neglected it and just didn't do anything with it. Similar to the YouTube comment idea. <laughs> and then... He started a blog again, like in the last week. Anybody know Cloud Income? People know Lewis Ogden? So he and I have like worked on multiple courses together, worked on a lot of projects together. Awesome guy. Glad he's going to start blogging again. He's been heads down working for you know about three years. Hasn't blogged in a while. That group's going to be good once it gets rolling again. And there's a couple others in there. And, um, <laughs> and me personally, Garav, I hate Facebook groups. Just me, though. Jack says, where do I sign up for the live streams? Jack, thanks for asking. You can subscribe to the channel and then click the bell for notifications. So that's one thing to do via the YouTube app. Bell for notifications. The other thing you should do is go to nichesiteproject.com, click the green button, enter your name and email address. You'll join my email list. Now, in the short term, over the next I think 30 days or so, you'll be in my evergreen funnel where you will get automated emails and you won't get any sort of timely emails. But once you move that thir past that 30 day period, you will start getting broadcast emails that I send out typically on Mondays sometimes and almost always on Fridays. On Fridays, I put a link, send it out in the morning. And basically I give you a link to these live streams. But if you click the bell for notifications and you know make sure 
YouTube understands that you want to be notified for these live streams, then you'll be in good shape. Um, and the HPD group is pretty good. Niche Pursuits is good. Um, affiliate Niche Builders, yep, those are all good. Paul, you nailed it. Thank you. So Only for Gamers ask, am I running Niche Pursuits? Actually, I'm not. That's Spencer Hawes. I do Niche Site Project. I also run a few of my own personal websites as well. And I have a podcast called The Doug Show where I talk about a lot of the same stuff. It's a Doug.show. I got that pretty cool domain, Doug.show. Yeah, if people haven't checked out the podcast, like Gaurav um, is a podcast listener, first time joining the live stream. So like this is a much more active part of the community. And I think the live stream folks, I mean, the yeah, the live stream folks and the podcast listeners are sort of the most interactive. Isaac says, when I use the KGR, do I use any other tools to verify competition or just trust the KGR? So you should go and Google the term and see what comes up. Sometimes you'll notice that it turns out that Google just translate translates that term, that phrase, the query, into something different that you did not intend. And if that's the case and you see like a bunch of super competitive sites and your site's brand new, you potentially just want to like skip that one for now. But the thing is, and I don't talk about it a ton because I don't want to confuse people, but here you're in an hour and 13 minutes. So maybe it's time, you know, if you're in this deep if you have a site that's already ranking, if you're getting traffic, if it's out of the Google sandbox, you can generally be a little more aggressive with the KGR. So if you do find something that looks too competitive, maybe you go for it anyway. Maybe you go for it anyway. There's no, you know, there's no hard and fast rule because the problem is each niche is different, each set of keywords is a little bit different. So to get the best data, you kind of just have to publish on your website, see what kind of traction you get. Like if you, I don't know how long you've been on this stream here, Isaac, but like, I think there've been like four or five people that said, hey, I, I did the KGR and it's working pretty well. And then some other people, some, I mean, I hear from other people who say, hey, I published 20 articles, it's been two months, I'm getting zero traffic. They've made some mistake somewhere. I don't know what it is. There's usually like, four or five things that are pretty common. All right, GS, um, you should go to my website, nichesiteproject.com slash FAQ. So you're asking on using product images, can you download from the manufacturer and then upload to my WordPress site? Generally, no. Technically, you can do that. It's possible. But you run the risk of copyright issues. You can ask for permission from the manufacturer. Um, you will find other people doing this all the time. But technically, you shouldn't do that. You could run into some issues with Amazon, potentially. And if you're working with another affiliate program, they may have different rules, and you could check with them. But you can't just use images that you find, even if it's from the manufacturer, unless you have permission. You can run into trouble with that. All right, I think we uh, we did pretty good today. Thanks everyone for hopping on. Again, if you have a chance, check out Derek's video that I published yesterday. Derek was on the live stream earlier. Thanks to Derek if he's still on. He has about 90 posts on his site, making $2,300 a month. And I think the site's under, yeah, the site's under one year at this point. He's been working on it for a little while. He tells us about his process, what he's working on exactly. And um, Jack says, what is HPD? That's Human Proof Designs. They have uh, several services that, where they sell products and, and services. And then they have a Facebook group where they have a community of people. They talk about affiliate marketing, all, the, all this sort of stuff. And they sell their products. So but you should check it out. Good people over there at Human Proof Designs. And yep, some of the other groups are pretty good too. You got niche affiliate empires, um, affiliate niche builders and niche pursuits. It's funny, they're all the same, same uh, name. 
Um, all right, Chunky Moose, see ya. And then we got Dewad says, what's my thought on Motion Invest? So I'm an affiliate for them, so I have to disclose that. It's my friends that run it, Spencer Hawes and John Haver over there. So they're all good folks. You can check it out. I think if if you're the right, if it's the right fit for you, then you'll know. Like if you have a website that has like uh, sort of average to low revenue and you want to sell it, they a lot of times can give you a quick cash offer. You don't have to pay a broker fee. They buy it directly from you and then they resell it later. If you're looking to buy a site, a lot of times they'll, they'll have it much cheaper than some of the others out there. All right. And Paul says you tried to sell your site with HPD, but then you got hit. Paul, I didn't even know that HPD was selling sites for people like that, like a broker. Huh, how about that? Crazy. All right, have a good one out there and check out all the links in the description. If you can comment on my videos, that'll be awesome. And someone remind me next week and the week after that, like, dude, you said you were gonna do a challenge where you answer all the comments and then I'll do this like blitz of answering comments and see if it actually like builds up the channel. It'd be pretty interesting, especially if I put out a bunch of videos, ask for comments, comment on old stuff, comment on new stuff. Could be something to it. I mean, everyone says you should do those comments. So, all right, see ya.